G'day and welcome back to Epic Birds. My name is Michael Huxley and today I'm coming to you from the Himalayan state of Sikkim. A lot has happened since my last update. At that point I was in Gujarat in the far northwest of India. Now I'm in Sikkim in the far east. So let's run through all the things that have happened in the last couple of weeks. After Gujarat, we caught an overnight bus all the way to Jaisama in the far north of Rajasthan. Jaisama is dominated by a fortress which looms over the city and is filled with narrow alleyways. We spent over a day exploring the magical streets of the fortress as well as the nearby markets. At this point, you might be wondering about bird life. Well, to be honest, bird watching wasn't really a priority here. We were mainly focused on exploring the magical sights of Rajasthan. And that holds true for our next two sites, Jodhpur and Jaipur, which play host to some of the most quintessential architecture of India. But we have so much to cover in this update, I'm going to save the footage of this part of the journey for the full documentary, which will hopefully be released in a few months' time. Our next stop was Agra, the home of the Agra Fort, and of course, the Taj Mahal. The fog in the morning was so bad in Agra that we couldn't actually see the Taj Mahal until after one o'clock in the afternoon. But it was worth the wait. It's the world's most beautiful building. I think they're right. What about the birds? Well, Agra actually threw up a little surprise. Not far from the Taj Mahal, I was lucky enough to see a group of Indian grey hornbills feeding in a small tree. This turned out to be the only hornbill species I saw during the trip. Having thoroughly enjoyed Agra, we decided to head south to Kudraho. Unfortunately though, the fog that had haunted our visit to Agra was here to stay, and our train was delayed by over 16 hours. Eventually, at 1am, we arrived at Kudraho. The next day, we explored the fascinating temple complexes. The carvings and figures on the temples in Kudraho were the most intricate I saw anywhere in India. The surrounding gardens were also home to a variety of birds, including these beautiful Brahmani starlings and this young black drongo. Black drongos were one of the most frequently seen species during the trip but the Brahmani starling only showed up here in Kudraho. Our next stop was Varanasi. However, considering the 16 hour delay on our previous train and the amount of fog still present in the mornings, we decided to fly. We had actually avoided flying up until this point because I was concerned that getting onto a domestic flight with my backpack full of camera gear would prove a problem. But it turned out that flying was extremely easy and convenient and there was no issue at all with my backpack. So, just over an hour later, we arrived in Varanasi. But once again, this was not a place to go bird watching. We were here to soak up the atmosphere, the history and the spectacular views of the Ganges. So I'll leave the details for the full documentary. With around a week left in the trip, I decided to fly from Varanasi to the Himalayan state of Sikkim. This called for two flights, one from Varanasi to Kolkata and another from Kolkata to Bagdogra in West Bengal. From there, it was a 12 hour drive into the mountains to reach the town of Pelling in Sikkim. Due to recent floods and landslides, the road conditions in Sikkim were atrocious. 
Everywhere there were signs of construction work as the roads were slowly being repaired. As a foreigner, I actually needed a permit to be able to enter Sikkim at all. And by the time I eventually arrived, it was pitch black. But this epic journey was worth it. The next morning, the view of the Himalayas was absolutely spectacular. Right in front of me was the third highest mountain on earth. Not only that, but Sikkim lived up to its reputation as one of the great bird watching destinations in the world. One of my first birds in Sikkim was this great barbet, which frequented the hotel garden to feed on tennis ball sized red fruit hanging in the trees. These gorgeous black throated tits were a common sight in the area. Although the bird life was absolutely spectacular, photography here was a challenge because the forest is just so dense and dark. So many of my photos were taken at high ISO and they will need to be processed using DxO Pure Raw in order to reduce the noise. That is particularly evident in these photos of a grey winged blackbird and a blue whistling thrush which were taken in the densest and darkest areas of the forest. A highlight for me was seeing a flock of these beautiful chestnut-tailed minlers feeding in the forest canopy, but their constant movement made capturing a photograph challenging. What was particularly special about Sikkim was the fact that virtually all of the species I saw here were new to me, despite having travelled in India for almost five weeks. Another highlight for me was undoubtedly this spectacular male green-tailed sunbird which flew into a bush only a few metres away. I was extremely lucky to encounter a small group of the range-restricted rusty-fronted barwings feeding in a fruiting tree in the hotel gardens. A much more common, in fact quite abundant species in this area was the Himalayan Sebia. These birds were highly active, feeding and chasing after each other in the forest canopy. But my absolute favourite was the chestnut crowned laughing thrush, a highly secretive but beautifully plumaged species which spends most of its time hiding in dense vegetation. But after many hours of trying, I finally managed to capture a few photos of this gorgeous bird. Well, that's it for today, so thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.